Hello and good morning. This is Eric Hyatt, Product Technical Specialist with Meritor. Today we're going to talk about driveline failure analysis and maybe more specifically how Meritor components can maybe prevent some of those uh, failures on the driveline. So over the course of time, when you install the U-joint, you needed to make sure you installed it in, this, in a specific manner. So you wanted to have the U-joint grease circ in what we call the compression mode to where it is, and you see the picture down the lower left, the engine is rotating and is trying to squeeze the U-joint uh, grease circ in, in between the two journals. That is a compression mode. In this illustration, we're showing where the U-joint was installed and that grease circ is now on the opposite side of the engine rotation. And so this is where the yoke attaches to the transmission. It's going to try to pull apart the U-joint at the grease circ. So many designs have changed. Ours has changed though where this failure will not happen, but there are a lot of uh, uh, older designs and, and uh, aftermarket designs where they hadn't changed or using old technology. And you'll see occasionally a failure over on the right where the failure initiates on one journal and it, it, it initiates at the grease circ opening. So if you install the grease circ in the right position uh, upon replacement, you'll prevent this problem. So let's talk about shock load. You know, it's a sudden powerful force that goes into the U-joint and basically breaks off. It typically happens that you will see two of the journals broken off from the joint. When you look at that surface, it'll be a rough crystalline surface that's formed on that U-joint break at the fracture point, okay? So what we're doing, is we're trying to prevent that in our U-joint. So we use contour roller ends to help basically distribute that stress a little bit. It helps decrease the wear in that area and then it also improves the life. The more important piece of the puzzle to help prevent that failure is we've improved the radius where that journal or trunnion attaches to the cross itself. And we've, uh, I'll show you pictures a little later with more detail as to what we've done with that radius to help distribute that stress more evenly across that and help prevent this failure. Burnelling is really where that U-joint roller is being beat into the, the journal area. Um, it can be because of uh, improper torquing of the U-bolt, excessive driveline angles, maybe a uh, sprung or a bent yoke, or C slip splines on, on a slip yoke. So from that perspective, uh, two pieces of that. Again, the, our bearing package those rollers are a larger number of rollers with a smaller diameter. That means we have more surface contact with those additional rollers. And we use the uh, uh, thrust washer at the end of that cap to help keep the medial bearings in place and help keep them from skewing, as you see in the picture, uh, and keep them rolling underneath that cap. So. Lubrication, a lack of it is a primary failure for a U-joint. But it really comes down to, when we say a lack of lube, it's really an improper purging of the U-joint, which allows or provides inadequate grease to those two bearing caps. And you see of the picture, two of the caps are perfect, and then two of the journal ends are burned up. So it was an improper greasing procedure where they didn't purge the air pocket out and get grease into the cap. Now, we use our Meritor triple lip seal to keep the grease in, so the procedure, this seal itself doesn't prevent this from happening if there isn't a proper procedure of greasing the cap. And the bottom line is you have to bring the cap or loosen the cap bolts, allow the cap to spread out a little bit so that you can purge the grease out. It has to purge out of all four caps in order to be properly greased. So, spalling, it's really water contamination or dirt contamination in the U-joint. And this kind of contaminates the failure, which breaks it down, uh, the lubrication, which breaks it down, and eventually you have a lube failure. Um, our triple lip seal really is, is the secret in this area. We have two inner lip seals that retain the grease in, in the bearing cap, and then one external extruder lip seal to help keep the dirt out. And then we protect that extruder lip seal with basically a metal shield which helps keep the dirt from getting to that, uh, that lip and wearing on it. So those two features are really the key to a long life and the Meritor U-joint. 
and extended loop cycle of 100,000 miles on line haul. So end galling is really found in a lot of the aftermarket U-joints where we have uh, a metal to metal contact at the bottom of the cap and the end of the trunnion. And you can see it's galled up and welded. Well, that usually happens when you have higher operating angles and it, the cap moving back and forth wipes the grease away. And therefore now you have metal to metal contact, which is a friction weld. So what we do is we put in a nylon reinforced uh, thrust washer that eliminates that metal to metal contact, well, therefore eliminating any potential for galling or wear. Uh, we absorb a little bit of that particles that may be involved in the wear process into that uh, thrust washer. It also retains the needle bearings in place. It has loop channels to help distribute that loop. But most importantly, if you're a dry line builder, it helps maintain a tight end play clearance so that when you're balancing that shaft, you're not going to have a problem balancing the shaft with that genuine meritor you join. Center bearings fail in a couple ways. One is the primary failure is the, the rubber fails due to misalignment, maybe imbalance in the dry shaft or plain, simple environment. Then the second part of that failure could be the bearing failing internally, where it's ingested either rain, ice, dirt into the bearing itself and it causes the failure. So what do we do in, uh, on the Meritor U joint or should I say center bearing to help prevent that? We have three possible ways to correct misalignment. We got a horizontal misalignment, a vertical misalignment, which is between the four, plus or minus four to five degrees. And then we have a quarter inch, which is a total of one half inch, four and a half movement. Those are three pieces of the puzzle that help keep the rubber from being fatigued because it's, it's being stressed. We also use a sealed roller bearing. So there's no greasing to that, but we, we add in an integral deflective shield to the outside barrier. And we put a little bit of, of, of basically water preventing grease on the inside of that shield to keep moisture from getting up underneath and starting to decrode or penetrate the seal area on the bearing. Extends that life dramatically. Then we put slotted holes into the uh, metal component to allow for a little misalignment with the cross member. So let's talk about component fractures. Most commonly you'll get the yoke fracture. When you look at that, that is a bending fatigue type fracture. It's instantaneous because of the a sudden and forceful force into the yoke. A lot of times it happens because the wheel is spinning on ice and then it grabs pavement. That's a sudden stop. Usually fails the U-joint across two of the journals and it will fail the yoke in many cases, as you see in the picture. That fracture will, will be a clean break. It will be rough crystalline across that surface all the way the entire length. If you see small little lines in it, and maybe a different color is in that crystalline form, that meant it was being overloaded and it didn't fail instantaneously, but it was overloaded over time. If you look at a, a spline shaft, a spline shaft fracture is really a twisting fatigue. So it weakens during uh, that process of twisting it back and forth. It weakens the material and it starts that same rough crystalline break. And then as you get into the inner core, you'll see that the metal is much rougher and more uh, 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 radical in pattern. It looks more mountainous as you want to look at. And that's the final part of the break. If you ever see the little marks, those are called beach marks. And that means that was basically being overloaded over time versus an instantaneous failure. So dry shafts basically bowl from the center line in normal operation. It's designed into the product itself. Um, as speeds increase, the dry shaft will continue to bowl from the center line. So at some point in time, there is a critical speed where that dry shaft bow takes a set at that point in time, that creates a vibration and that vibration will continue to increase with speed until eventually you can have a dry shaft fail and be thrown from the truck. So the other part of the failure is uh, a driver line overload. Um, overloads are instantaneous overloads where the material in the, either in the tube or in the U-joint reach their yielding point and result in bent or broken components, okay? Tubes are designed to flex, so there's a lot of flex involved, but at the point in time when it flexes too much, the resulting twisted tube, as you see in the picture, 
the right. Typically, what goes along hand in hand with that is the U joint fails two of the journals simultaneously in that overload situation. What are we doing to prevent it? Well, we can't prevent the tube as much other than going up in diameter when you build the shaft. But from a trunnion standpoint, we've changed that profile. So earlier I talked about a change in that radius. Now you can see the profile change on the U-joint that helps mitigate the failure at the U-joint itself, which improves is, is basically overall, overall loading over a higher torque range. When you do fail a dry shaft, we have a program now called Meritor Dry Shaft on Demand, or a nickname of, of that is DOD program. It's all genuine components built and shipped within 24 hours. That's what everybody wants is to have that truck up and running as quick as possible. So we cover Meritor MXL product, the Spicer 10 series product, Meritor RPL product, and Spicer SPL product. Now those are all genuine parts, whether they're Meritor genuine or Spicer genuine parts, but they're genuine. And we reduced it to 28 SKUs to help make it easy for quoting a price to the customer. Length of dry shaft doesn't matter. It's really series size and what type of shaft that you have. So it's all pre prepaid ground freight. We have a nice easy form to fill out and help you guide you through the ordering process, which is miscellaneous 1783. You put your customer information in, then you identify the series, the assembly type, and then measure the drive line lengths. If you have any questions relative to that, you can always contact your Meritor district manager to help you through that process. What do we need to gather when we have a failure? You want uh, some input from Meritor. We need to kind of understand how the failure happened. So what was the driver doing at the time of failure? What other symptom, warning symptoms, were, were present prior to the event. So was he on ice in weather conditions? Was he rolling backwards down the hill? Did he hear they have the front vehicle bopping up and down because as he was engaging the, the clutch, it was bouncing the front with axle off the ground. Those are kind of important things that kind of help uh, gather the right information and give the right answer to the customer for a failure. Remember, document all joints that are broken and their position in the drivetrain. So the one that breaks at the transmission versus one that breaks at the axle gives me an indication as to where the torque overload was coming from. Again, document other components such as uh, the main transmission gears that may have broke or drive axle pinions that may have broken the process. Always take close-up photos. So when I say close-up photos, within the 12 inch rain, and we're always looking at the fractured surfaces. A five foot photo does no good for me to do any type of analysis on it. So you're gonna ask for the parts to be returned to Meritor. You're gonna return authorization number for Meritor. And at that point in time, if you have notes from the customer and or pictures, you can tie it to an email referencing that authorization number and send it to Meritor. So all of this information we're talking about is in one simple web link. Easy, so you don't have to search through multiple documents. MeritorDriveLines.com is the source. And you can see there's products, publications, sources, training, MPX, as well as uh, any other type of information you'd like to have. So pertinent to what our presentation is, parts failure analysis, the maintenance manual, uh, application guides, uh, the features of the MPX uh, you joint in the warranty, the RPL series, as well as the center bearing. Then, if you don't have one of these, there's a driveline yoke ruler that is available from Meritor. And you can ask your district manager to help you order that. And also, you can help him have him walk you through the DOD spec form if you're not familiar with it. Next month's seminar is going to be on wheel end. We invite you to tune in at that time. Again, thank you. This is Eric Iatt, Product Technical Specialist from Meritor.